recently from Broach to American Top Team. Can you talk us the reason behind doing this? Um, I mean, it was it was a little complicated, you know what I mean? But you know, me me and Coach Trevor Whitman, you know, we boys, we still homeboys. He's one of my my, my best friends. Um, really good boxing coach. Uh, it's just it was just a mis miscommunication, you know, what um, what cost, you know, it was it's going to cost me too much to be there, and um, for me, you know. I just I couldn't afford it basically you know what I mean I just I didn't I didn't want to go down that road so but we still keep in touch we still have good communication and um, I still hire him for side jobs like if I want to go up there and train for a couple of weeks you know and, and pay for privates I'll, I'll do it that way you know what I mean but that that was all it was it was no no big bonfire barn burner no arguments nothing like that. Yeah, what's your relationship like with the Black Indians? Uh, <laughs> I don't really have a problem with the Black Zillions. I just have a problem with how things were run there. Um, you know, my former manager, Glenn Robinson, he's a, he, he, he's a smart guy. He's just not good with managing fighters, with running, running a fight business, you know what I mean? He's really good at inventing tools, though. He can do that, but... Um, I don't really, like I said, I don't have a problem with the Black Zillions. You know, I, I'm still friends with some of those guys. I still talk to some of those guys. I still talk to Rashad. You know, it's just, it was, it's just, I didn't fit in there. You know, I mean, it was, I think it was best that I leave. And that's what I did. Does it feel a little weird that you're fighting a Black Zillions fight or not? No, I asked for this fight. I wanted this fight. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's like, you know, you leave, you leave one house, you go to another house. But yet, you, you still had a bad taste in your mouth from that last house, so you want to you wanna make everybody in there just feel how you felt. So me beating Michael Johnson is going to make them feel it, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's cool, it's fun. It, ma it makes the fight fun, you know what I mean, when you think of, think of little corny stuff like that. And Michael Johnson said to us yesterday that uh, there's animosity between you two from your side alone. He said that he has no real will towards you. No, it's not any animosity like that. It's just, it's like a business animosity. You know what I mean? Like, I don't dislike Michael Johnson. You know, there's times, like, I don't care for some of the stuff he's, he's done. Or, you know, in the, in the training room, you know, we're both, we're both 55ers. You know, I'm an alpha male. You know, I'm never going to be second to nobody. So, in the training room, that's kind of how our attitudes were. It's not that we hate each other or nothing like that. It's, no, it's no, it's no bad blood. It's just professionalism on a professional level. You know, as a fighter, I don't like him. Right now, I don't like him as a fighter. You know, I have to fight him. I don't like him. But on a personal level, you know, we never hung out outside the gym or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure after I give him this ass whooping, we'll be hanging out. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, it's, for some reason, I make friends with everybody I fight. You know what I mean? And, it, and it's been like that for a couple of years now. So I'm going to keep the trend going. You know what I mean? But like I said, I never had any bad blood with him. I just... I didn't care for certain things he did in, in the gym as a person, you know what I mean? He's more like a little prima donna. That's all. Uh, so you said you trained with him a lot. Like, have you got any Pat Cummins type stories? Yeah, like, yeah. No, nah, man, no, no, no. You know, dude, I'm going to tell you, like, when me and him trained at the Black Zillions, it got to a point where they used to have to separate us. They used to, like, literally, because we'll be sparring and it'll turn into a real fight. So. You know, that's what I'm saying, like the intensity of our training regiments used to be really intense. That's all. That's all it was. You know what I mean? But it was, I see you at work, when I, and that was it. I go home, I never see him. You know, I never hung out with him outside the gym. You know, I've never been to a strip club with him, so that definitely don't make us friends. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the only friends I got are the ones that go to the strip club with me. You know what I mean? So I, I can't say that he's my friend. You know, we was just business partners. That was it. We're not partners anymore because we, we're on rival teams. We don't train together. You know, we're, we're competitors now. You know what I mean? And I like it like that. Did you welcome the change of opponent? Because obviously the last time we were supposed to fight Ross Pearson in Manchester and then that got rescheduled to here. So that would have been like six, seven, eight months focusing on the opponent. Man, you know, I say this time and time again, and, and it's like, when I train, I don't train to fight a certain fighter. I train to prepare myself to fight my fight. You know, when I go into a cage, 
I dictate the pace. I dictate where I want the fight to be. You know, if I'm fighting a jiu-jitsu guy, then I have to work hard to stay on my feet. You know, work hard to, to fight the takedowns. You know, use my judo in ways that uh, most guys in MMA haven't seen. You know, judo is just now making its way to the UFC. And Ronda Rousey is a big help with that too. You know, she's making a lot of noise for the judo world. Um, so I think a lot of guys are starting to catch on. But for me, it's like, I prepare myself to go to battle. So when they change an opponent, it's no sweat for me, you know what I mean? Because I'm not in the gym training one dimensionally for one particular person. I'm training myself to be ready to fight because I can fight from anywhere in the ring, you know what I mean? If I, I can fight off my back, I can fight on top. I'm definitely great on my feet. So I, as long as I'm in shape, I'm fine. Johnson's never been KO'd in a fight. Do you think he fears your power? Everybody fears my power. Everybody, you know what I mean? I don't care who you are. I know I'm a hard-hitting motherfucker. I, anything, I, I hit so hard I break my hand. That's how hard I hit, you know what I mean? When you can be part of a hard-hitting club, then talk to me. But everybody's gonna say, oh, I've never been knocked out. Well, unfortunately, I got knocked out by my own um, best friend and ex-teammate, Cowboy Cerrone, which it was a fight I was winning, and that was the first time I was ever KO'd. And I thought I would, I thought I would have a career of never being knocked out. So it happens to the best of us, you know what I'm saying? But I have a high knockout percentage ratio, and I think if I had to go to the Vegas books and bet would I knock Michael Johnson out, I'll bet my house on it. Yeah, last question: Did you uh, did you get to see Pat Perry's impression of you on the MMA era? No, I haven't. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and Ariel Ovani was talking to him uh, to Pat Perry and said that you rang him up when uh, Pat Perry was like, leaving the UFC and you thought he wasn't uh, going to fight anymore. You give him a call and then he done the impression. Oh, Pat Barry. Pat Barry. Oh, I, I didn't even get what you said, Pat Barry. Yeah, I, I talked to Pat, man. Um, the night that I, um, the night that I, I read the blog, it was on Twitter. I called Pat right away. I was like, what's going on? You know, because, you know, me and Pat came up together. You know, he was kickboxing and I was doing MMA when I was 16. And we were both the two, basically the two hometown favorites back home in New Orleans. So we grew up training together. He was my first kickboxing coach. And when he retired from MMA, I, I thought he was quitting fighting altogether. And I was like, well, what the hell are you going to do? Go back to Domino's? You know, he used to work for Domino's when we were young. And he was like, nah, man, I'm going to go back to kickboxing. I'm going to fight for glory, you know. And Pat's a great kickboxer. Like, hands down, he's one of the best. My, my two favorite kickboxers right now today is Pat Berry and Tyrone Sprung. My two all-time favorite right now, you know. And I happen to know both of those guys, and I was, uh, I was able to train around those guys. And they're both really good kickboxers. MMA is a different kind of sport, you know. And it was cool for Pat to jump out of his comfort zone and try out. MMA, but I never thought he would do that great in MMA because because of the takedowns and the jiu-jitsu part of it, you know what I mean? He's a really great striker, but he's not great at wrestling either, so I knew that would hurt him once he got up in the rankings, if he ever did get to the top, you know? So I think he, he made a smart decision going back to kickboxing. Plus, I hear there's really good money in kickboxing right now, which back in the day, it really wasn't that great. So he, had, he still have an opportunity to make a living I say, well, we should go to kickboxing. You didn't see his uh, impression of you on the other No, no, I haven't seen the impression, though, but I did talk to him. But I'll, I'll definitely go look it up and check it out. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> no problem.